All right, I'm just gonna explain this in video form for you to make sure that we're all on the same page. If all of the switches are up, that way, you have both of these engaged as full humbuckers. Series switching, your loudest possible sound. If this goes down, so up, up, down, these are out of phase from each other and going against each other. That'll be your quack sound. Other than when these two are up, this one I would not use down at any point. I'd always have it up. Um, it disengages one of the coils when put in the down position when in P90 or single coil mode. If these two are down, both down, you are in series with these two pickups. You are in parallel with these two pickups. They'll sound like a PAF. They'll sound like a regular humbucker, not a real powerful humbucker. They'll be like your normal humbucker guitar. Bright, um, like early Gibson sounding humbucker. You switch that one up. So you have up, down, up. You're going to be P90s on the guitar. You have a P90 guitar at that point. If you reverse that and you have down, up, up, you're doing single coils. These two single coils right here. You'll be then doing the single coil thing. And again, if they're all up, you will be doing full force um, series wired pickups. Your volume knob is here. If you press up on the volume knob, it'll pop up. That'll give you a gain boost. That gain is controlled by this back knob. The back knob will give you from unity gain to 11 decibels. Your tone knob is right there, regular tone knob. If you pull up on the tone knob, it cuts the bass out of the guitar and makes it a little bit brighter. It'll also disconnect the tone knob so you can go from having the tone rolled all the way off and then slap it in and you will then all of a sudden be fully bright with a little less bass and have your brightest tones. The gain knob in the back right here, if you pull up on it, it'll kill the battery and it'll send your signal ground, making your signal dead and making sure that you have no sound coming out of your guitar and you're saving your battery. So when you play, that's down. Your um, oval switch is right here. This will engage your oval. It'll go through the oval before going to your thing. If you don't have a go oval put in, you will not hear anything. The oval off is back, so slap it back to shut it off. If you push it forward, your oval is engaged and you're going to oval. So that is oval off. I keep it off when I move it because you usually get it and you don't plug in your oval. You just plug in your regular input when you get the guitar and therefore it works when you get it. Um, the battery is under the hood right here. Four small screws. Take it off. Your bridge is right there. I gave you a basic intonation. It was intonated when it left, but your condition is going to be different where you're at. It's going to change and you're going to want to work with that. Um, with the truss rod, the truss rod is up in here. I'd say after two weeks of having the guitar, I would definitely um, just make sure that you reset it up. Make sure that it's the action you want. The flats are, frets are dead level, so you can pretty much bring it down to nothing or you can bring it up. Um, I put it at a comfortable, what I consider a comfortable action with just the littlest bit of relief on the guitar. Um, giving you the best tone you're going to get. Um, the nut is a zero fret as we talked about, but the spacer here and the, and the riser there are not glued down. They stay as they are. That is how they're able to freely function and not bind. Um, if that bothers you when you take your strings off, you can always put a drop of crazy glue underneath of the wood. It'll stick it to the body and a drop of crazy glue between the wood and the nut, and that'll prevent that. I don't suggest that. There's really no reason for it. Um, but just know that the nut is not fully, con is not connected, and that's on purpose to allow you to change that, adjust your action, adjust what's going on. And it also allows the strings, if you notice, if you have no binding issues, you bend up on these strings and they have channel 
to move on. You bend down on these strings, they have channel to move on, and it creates a situation where you don't have any binding, no matter how much you pull on your strings. Um, strap locks, and the strap locks are in the case here. And yeah, I think that pretty much sums up everything about the guitar. Strings go in the back right there. Um, it's set up with the Adario 10 to 46s. I would strongly suggest keeping it in the case and oiling it up probably every couple months. A um, Home Depot butcher block oil is really the best thing for it. Fly that every once in a while, especially if it's dry. I know you live more towards the desert, so your things dry out a lot faster. Um, so it all will depend on weather conditions and what you do. It's going to keep you having the most natural touching guitar you're going to be able to get. Um, and it looks great when you, when you oil it. So, yeah. This is really a... It's kind of a sad moment because I've really grown to love this guitar. But I know it's going to a great home and that's how this whole thing goes. And um, I love seeing these things go off where they get played. And, you know, there'll be another one here for me to play soon enough. All right. Uh, we will be in touch. Congratulations and thank you.